Yeah, we're gonna start. I'm not 100 percent either, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, muy bien. Y buenos días, buenos días. Espero que ustedes estén bien. I hope you guys are well, as well as well as we all can be <laughs> these days. Okay, uh, lo que vamos a hacer hoy, what we're going to do today, uh, we're going to split our time a little bit. We're going to do a little bit with uh, some of these um, odd words that were kind of highlighted in that uh, video. Uh, some of the words were used with ser and estar. Some of it was not a case of just ser estar, but, um, you know, a little bit of these confusing words and just how we use them. Um so we will need we will need our little tricky description thing here. See if you've got some good examples for these. Okay, we're gonna do that first. I don't think that's gonna take all of our time. Most of our time, I really want to spend on this past tense bit. Yeah. So we'll just take your examples on the confusing words, but then we're gonna really go into the prompts you had based on this video. And I think, uh, you know, based on what some people sent me with questions, uh, emailed questions in the in-between class times, um, um, you know, we may even just step through the, like, do a, a, do a quick translation so that people can see how these two past tenses work. Okay. Because some people are a little bit newer to the idea of preterito versus imperfecto. And why are those two used was the main uh, um, idea behind that video. So, okay. And then we had some questions for you guys to use in between. Uh, bueno, vamos a empezar. Uh, you have this little video that talked about the palabras confusas, and we're going to uh, go through um, some of your ideas, some of your examples with this. Entonces, vamos a empezar aquí. Uh, voy a engrandecer. La pantalla un poquito. I'm going to, uh, okay. Um, this little, <clears throat> uh, this little bit on how confuso is different from confundido. Uh, confuso is confusing. A thing is confusing or a situation is confusing. Okay. Um, and we tend to use this with ser, okay? Um, and, and of course, I can go into confuso or confusa, but it is used differently than confundido. Confundido is the feeling. We use that with estar. So estar confundido means to be confused, meaning, meaning you feel that way. Ok, bien. Ok, por ejemplo, y tengo dos ejemplos aquí. El horario de mi esposo siempre cambia, es confuso. My husband's schedule is always different. It's confusing. Ok, so it is confusing. Nobody feels confused. That situation is just confusing. Uh, versus confundido, confused. No puedo entender una película sin tu tip. Estoy confundida, estoy confundido. I can't understand a movie without subtitles. I'm confused. Okay, so estar with confundido because it's how you feel. And for how you feel or where you are, you always use the verb estar. Cheesy little mnemonic device, but it happens. Okay, uh, algunos ejemplos. How about some examples using that something es confundido or es, confu or, or es confuso, perdón, es confuso or es confusa. Okay, Diana. En español, perfecto, per, no, preterito y imperfecto son confuso. Son confusos, <laughs> el preterito y el imperfecto, los tiempos del pasado son confusos. The past tenses are confusing. Sí. So you have to put in, you have to use the S because it's a, it's a plural verb. Exacto. Or a plural subject. Exacto. Exacto. Muy bien. Sí. Mm -hmm. Eso es. 
Buen ejemplo. Good example. Hay otro ejemplo. And, uh, Mariana, sí. Tenemos tres mandos de distinción de televisión. Oh. <laughs> ah, bien, sí. Sí, es muy confuso. Es muy confuso, bien, <laughs> bien, bien. Ah, uh, uh, bueno, sí, Terry. Sí, um, el cambio de tiempo reloj en otros estados es confuso. Ah, muy bien, sí, eso es. En el otoño... <laughs> Y otra Falta. vez en la primavera. Sí, exacto, sí. Uh, nosotros que tenemos parientes o amigos que viven en, en otros estados, sí, con daylight savings y todo eso, sí. <risa> Pero, sí, es confuso. Muy bien. Hay otro ejemplo con es confuso. Algo es confuso o no. Bien. Ok, confundido. Confund estoy, confund estoy confundido. O estoy confundida. Depende. Sí, cuando. Eh, eh, sí, Mariana. Estoy confundido cuando uso el tiempo pasado en español. Eso es. Sí, sí. Muy bien. Estoy confundida. Estoy confundida. confundida. Because I'm not, okay. Because I'm estoy sure. confundida. Because you're talking about yourself and right. how you feel, right? It's got to go to talking about a lady. And, yep. you know, yeah, it's the same thing. Same thing is, is, you know, estoy cansado versus estoy cansada. Same difference, same or same kind of usage. Eso es. Bueno, otro ejemplo con confundido. Estoy oh, no. Sí, de amar. Confundida cuando manejo por Chicago. Ah, cuando manejo en, en, ah, por Chicago, sí, when I drive through Chicago, sí, hay, uh -huh. hay muchas autopistas y sí, eso es, buen ejemplo, sí, Terry. Ok, um, estoy conf confundido cuando muchas personas hablan a la mismo tiempo. Ah, a la, a la, ah, ah, sí. Uh, estoy confundida. Confundida. Sí. Uh, estoy confundida, sí. Uh, mm -hmm. um, a la vez, at the same time, sí. Um, a la vez, yeah, not yeah, sí. Tiempo, a la okay. vez. Okay. Estoy confundida, pero buen ejemplo, bu buen ejemplo, sí. Um, Hay otro ejemplo, o oh, sí, yeah. uh, sí, Diana. Estoy confundida cuando tengo que usar mi celular uh, para comprar algo. Mm. Ah, el proceso de usar el celular para comprar cosas. Sí, sí, eso es. Muy bien, muy bien. Uh, ¿Otro ejemplo o siguiente? Siguiente. Siguiente. Siguiente, siguiente. Okay, esto, uh, this is more of a vocab thing. This is more of a false cognate thing. Okay, in the video, they referred to it as a falso amigo, false friend. And that's what they often, yeah. often like to call false cognates. You think sensible because it sounds like sensible, means sensible, but it does not. And... This word sensitivo, which would be a cognate because it sounds like sensitive, uh, does exist, but I can't tell you why, just not used very much. The favored word to say sensitive is sensible. So this is more of a false cognate kind of thing, sensible. Mm -hmm. So let's look at our uh, example. Uh, see? Uh, with sensible, uh, and we're going to plug in something. We're going to say somebody is sensitive. So sensitive means somebody is easily affected, uh, easily thrown into an uncomfortable state, let's say. Um, um, uh, uh, there we go. Okay, sensible. 
Uh, como mi nieta tiene cuatro años, as my, my grandkid is four years old, es muy sensible y no le gusta o no le gustan. She's very sensitive and she doesn't like. Las arañas. Ah, las arañas, por ejemplo, sí, las arañas. Sí. Oh. Um, oh. No, no le gustan ruidos más fuertes. Ah, no le gustan los ruidos muy fuertes, loud, loud noises. Sí, oh. es muy común con niñas de cuatro años. Sí, Terry. Um, no le gusta a comer comida que tiene cebolla. Ah, no le gusta comer, no le gusta comer comida con cebolla. Doesn't like to eat that thing. Es muy común, ¿sí? Ah, cuando no le gusta comer varias comidas, ¿sí? Ah, con frecuencia verduras. Pero, ok. Uh, bueno. Uh, oh, sí, Mariana. I, I'm not sure this is in the right context, but I'll give it a try. Uh, uh, no le gusta el muñeco Ken después de la película Barbie. Oh, no le gusta. El... No, el muñeco. Mu muñeco. 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 Oh, oh, el muñeco. Can, ah, Can. the candle. Yes. Después de la película Barbie. Ah, sí. Ok. Uh, <laughs> creo que aunque, <laughs> aunque referimos a Ken y es hombre, I believe we keep that word muñeca because muñeca by itself is just a feminine word, even though it's talking about a boy doll. Okay. La muñeca can. Oh, can. Sí. Okay. La muñeca can, porque can es can. <laughs> Después okay. la de la película Barbie. Ah, uh, bien. Okay, vale. Ah, uh, bueno, siguiente, siguiente. Okay. It, on the other hand, uh, if we do want to say sensible, sensible, we cannot use sensible. We need to use sensato. Mm. Sensato, sí. Uh, para un joven de 15 años es muy sensato. For a 15-year-old kid, he's pretty sensible. Y un contexto, context. ¿El siempre? Usa un abrigo cuando hace frío. Ok. Usa un oh. abrigo. Cuando hace frío. Usa abrigo cuando hace frío, sí. Eh, esto sí. Tiene mm -hmm. sentido. That makes sense, sí. Uh, bueno, sí, Kathleen. Um, para un joven de 15 años es muy sens sensato. Él siempre hace um, su tarea. Siempre hace su tarea. Él siempre hace su tarea. He always does his homework. Sensible kid. Bien, bien. Otra idea. Ah, bueno, sí, Terry. Para un joven de 15 años es muy sensato. El siempre pontes el casco cuando montas el bicicleta. Ah, sí. Eh, usa el casco, sí, helmet, sí. Sí, el casco. Ah, bien, sí. Esto sí. Tiene sentido. Makes sense. Makes sense. Bueno, sí, Jan. Para un joven de 15 años es muy sensato, el siempre come sus verduras. Ah, verduras, sí. Siempre come sus verduras. He always eats his veggies. Uh, sí, eso, sí. Uh, para un joven de 15 años es muy sensato, él ahorra el dinero de su trabajo. He saves money from his job. Ah, muy sensato. Sensible kid. The, the verb you used for save. Ah, save as in saving money, because there are two verbs that are save. Hmm. Saving money is this. 
Oh, oh. Ahorrar. Ahorra. Ahorra uh, eh, eh, el, el dinero de, de su trabajo o, uh, o de, de su sueldo, from his salary, lo que sea. Sí, bien, sí, ahorra. Uh, a lot of times you'll see this word um, in ads, you know, like um, ads for grocery stores or just buying anything. And it'll be like, you know, uh, algo así. It'll be something like this. Ahorra, ahorra, 30 por ciento, ahorra. Save 30 percent. <laughs> you know, you'll see this a lot. But this is different than the other save. Our other save, it, we just got, well, we have, yeah, well, we have many definitions in English for save, right? But the other uh, save is salvar which may seem nice and safe, but that's saving something from something dangerous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, um, saving somebody from drowning, saving somebody from running out in the street, saving, yeah. So that's not saving as in putting money aside. Uh, yeah, there are two different verbs, totally different verbs that do that. Uh, when, sí, Claudia. Tengo una pregunta. Um, sí. In when we're speaking in English, usually I don't use the word sensible. I usually say, if I were to say something like this, I would say, you know, he's very mature and saves his money. Would you, you is this more common, sensato? Is it a more common way to say oh, mature? Oh, es, tienes buena, buena pregunta. Is it more common? Mm. Or is it just a different? Okay, yeah. I wouldn't say more common. It's just, just as in English, there are different ways to express the same idea. So okay. yeah, if you want to say instead of sensible that somebody is mature, it is this word, maduro. Maduro. Okay. But now you've got to be very careful because you're talking about him and what he in his core is like. Do you think it's going to be ser or estar? Estar. Uh, no, ser. Actually, ser it's going to be sure. ser. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I could pull out that word sensato. You know, you like the word mature. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> ¿Por qué no? Why not? Yeah. Es, uh, y podemos decir, es, es muy maduro. Es muy maduro. He's very mature, but you don't want to use, here is another example of how está maduro means something very different. It means something is ripe, ready for the plucking. Yeah. So está maduro is used for things like fruits and veggies. Yeah. But es maduro for people because it really talks about what that person at their core is really like all the time as a general rule. Yeah. One of those reasons for using ser. Es buena pregunta. Okay. Vale. Siguiente. Siguiente. Onward and upward. Ah, muy útil. These are super useful. Gracioso or chistoso because... Actually, chistoso, I think they like to say is a little more common with Latin America. But, you know, un chiste is a joke. Yeah, if we take that word chistoso and we shorten it down to a, let's call it a core word, a noun. Eh? Un chiste is a joke. So, uh, uh, gracioso or chistoso means something that makes you laugh. Okay. Something is funny. It is amusing. It is funny. Okay, es chistoso. It actually makes you laugh, but it is actually kind of different, really, from divertido. Divertido means something that is enjoyable or fun. Okay, a good time, but it didn't necessarily produce a belly laugh. Okay, it doesn't have to make you laugh to be divertido. Ah, uh, bien. Okay, un ejemplo. Boom, boom, boom. Es muy gracioso o es muy chistoso. I'll go. Uh, bueno, sí. Um, 
cuando mi padre cuenta un cuento, uh, cuando joven y, sus, y su hermana se pintó los unas de los pies, eres muy gracioso. Ah, pinta las uñas, uh, paints the toenails, ¿sí? Or, his sister, or, his sister uh, painted his toenails when he sí. was a child. Eh, muy oh. gracioso, sí, sí, bueno, mm -hmm. um, un ejemplo más corto, a shorter example, por ejemplo, uh, la película Bill and Ted's Adventure es chistoso, es a funny movie, sí, oh. es chistoso, uh, pero sí, tienes buen ejemplo, you've got a good example, sí, hay otro ejemplo con gracioso o chistoso, hay otro, así, ah, Diana, el grupo de hombres azules es muy gracioso. Eh, el grupo mm. uh, Blue Man Group, sí. Uh, es un grupo de hombres, es como una banda, ¿no? Pero todos, uh, sí, no sabemos, sí, uh, hacen cosas, es performance art, como sí. se dice en inglés, es performance art, ¿no? Uh, <coughs> sí. Grupo uh, Blue Man, sí, es muy gracioso. Eso es, buen ejemplo. Uh, bueno, hay otro ejemplo con gracioso o chistoso. I'll go. Um, ah, sí. And I'm not sure if it should be a uh, mi amiga Jerry es muy graciosa o just mi amiga Jerry. Mi amiga Jerry es muy graciosa. My friend Jerry is very funny. She's good for uh, a good a good laugh. Uh, yeah. See? Sí? Okay. Bueno. So, um, Maron, when do you, when do you, you use the ah uh, before me? Oh, you see it sometimes. Ah. And why? Bien, es buena pregunta. You've got a good question. Ah uh, before a name happens when that person is the object of a sentence, when they receive the action. So mm -hmm. this happens with many different kinds of verbs. Por ejemplo, Um, you starve, right? Por ejemplo, uh, uh, but you'll, you'll never really hear it with ser or estar. No, I said gustar. Uh, oh, with gustar sometimes, although that's a little different. Okay, so we'll give you these two cases because they're really two different cases. Okay. This is called, this is an apersonal that Terry is bringing up. The apersonal happens with things like, ah, uh, Ah, bueno, hoy a las dos veo a mi amiga. Today at two, I'm seeing my friend. Hoy mm. a las dos veo a mi amiga. I'm oh. seeing my friend. En inglés, simply see my friend. En español, veo a mi amiga. Who am I seeing? My friend. She is the object. She is, re she is not doing the seeing. I'm doing the seeing, veo, right? But who am I seeing? I'm seeing a human being. So when the human being receives action, we use that a personal. And I lots of different verbs will use an a personal. Uh, uh, you know, it just depends on if the object is a human being. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, bam, 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 bam. Okay. But there is kind of another situation. It's kind of related, but it's a little bit different called, called a clarifying phrase. And that's like with verbs like gustar, because you hear a and a human being a lot with using gustar. Por ejemplo, a, a, mi, a mi hijo no le gusta el chocolate. My kid doesn't like chocolate. A mi hijo no le gusta el chocolate. Okay. So, no le gusta el chocolate. It can mean you formal don't like chocolate. He doesn't like chocolate. She doesn't like chocolate. Le gusta can mean like three different things. It's always talking about one human being. So, To better define who you mean by le, no le gusta, we put in an a phrase, and that usually leads it off, okay? A mi hijo no le gusta el chocolate. 
So there, it's still actually used as, uh, uh, you know, a human being who is an object, uh, an indirect object in this case, but, um, you know, a little bit different than the no veo uh, or veo a mi amiga a las dos. Okay. Bueno. Okay. Muy bien. Uh, bueno, uh, let's take uh, some looks at, uh, look, uh, look at divertido. Por ejemplo, es divertido escuchar la música. It's fun to listen to music. Por ejemplo, sí. Meaning it doesn't make you laugh. It's an enjoyable, it's a pleasure, uh, a pleasing uh, experience. Sí, es divertido escuchar la música. Hay otro ejemplo con es divertido. Es divertido cocinar con mis hijas. Mis, hija, mis hijas. Muy bien. Sí. Eso es. Eso es. Sí. Marcos, Mark, did I see your hand up? Yeah. Uh, es divertido ir a los partidos de, de, de deporte. Sí. Es divertido ir a los partidos. Fun to go to the games. Muy bien. Muy bien. Bueno, sí, Mariana. Es divertido ir a la playa. Es divertido ir. It's fun going to the beach. Okay. It doesn't make you laugh. It's just enjoyable. Bueno, sí, Diana. Uh, para los niños es divertido jugar en la nieve. En, en la nieve. <laughs> en la nieve. <laughs> es divertido jugar en la nieve. It's fun to play in the snow. Eso es, sí, exacto. Muy bien. Uh, bueno, sí, Pat. Es di <clears throat> Excuse me. Es divertido para dibujar a uh, los animales. Sí, muy bien. Muy bien. Bueno, ¿hay otro o siguiente? Ah, sí, ah, Carrie y entonces Terry. Carrie um, first. I, es divertido cuando estoy jugando partidos de cartas con mi familia. Eso, sí. Mm. Fun to play cards, card games with my family. Sí, Carrie. Es divertido viajar a lugares nuevos. Muy bien, sí, exacto, exacto. And notice, we often use this, you don't have to 100% of the time, but we often use this with infinitives, okay? It's fun to go, it's fun to eat, it's fun to cook, it's fun to travel, okay? And often, frequently, it's used with infinitives because it's fun to do something. It can be used to talk about things, too. Uh, um, uh, por ejemplo, una, una boda grande siempre es divertida. A big wedding is always fun. Mm. ¿Sí? Un, una, fiesta de, una fiesta de Navidad es divertida. A Christmas party is fun. ¿Sí? Algo así. So we can use it to talk about either things or activities. Vale, bien. Uh, and here we've got the classic ser en estar, uh, the dichotomy between why we use ser, why we use estar. We use ser to talk about how something at its core is a characteristic, a description, but a description that's a characteristic, and that means it's a description that it's like, it's pretty much always this way. And that could be a personality thing. It could be an actual physical trait. Okay. But said is always something that identifies. It slaps a big ID sticker, a tag, a label on a thing or a person versus a thought, which talks about how somebody feels. Okay, so the takeaway from this is that estar with descriptions talks about how people feel, okay, not what they're really like. So aburrido uh, is something is boring. Es aburrido. Es aburrido. And it, you can either lead off. The thing was to say aburrido, or you can follow up your thing after saying es aburrido. Por ejemplo, uh, mi profe en la, uh, mi profe de 
económica. Uh, mi profe de la clase de económica es aburrido. My econ professor is a bore. And there, I'm not saying a thing is a bore, but that guy, he is never interesting. I'm talking about what he is like. He is a big yawner 100% of the way. So we can talk about a thing being boring or a person being boring, but then that person is boring. Okay. Otro ejemplo con es aburrido. Um, I'll go. Um, how about uh, muchos programas de tele son aburrido? Ah, mm -hmm. sí, muchos programas. Ah, sí, muchos programas de, de, de la tele son aburridos. Lots of TV shows are boring. Sí, Diana. Uh, es aburrido escuchar las mismas noticias una y otra vez. <laughs> una y otra vez es a buen chunk. That's a good chunk. Una y otra vez, one and another time means over and over. Mm. Over and over we express as una y otra vez, one and huh? another time. In English, we would say that as over and over, meaning again and again and again. Una y otra vez, sí. Eso mm. es, sí. Uh, durante, especialmente durante un desastre. Cuatro horas sí. de un de desastre. Siempre lo mismo. Siempre lo mismo. Cuatro horas. No, it's, sí, es mala cosa. Bad thing. Four, time, four hours straight. Bueno, sí, Jan, ¿tienes algo? Es aburrido limpiar a mi casa. Ah, oh, <laughs> es, es aburrido limpiar mi casa. Limpiar mi casa. Cleaning my house. Sí, eso es, sí. <laughs> Exacto. Es aburrido limpiar. So we can talk about an activity being boring, okay? Or a human being being boring, whatever the case might be. Uh, pero en general, but general at its core. Sí, Nora. I have two, the ones that go together here. This one and then the, the next sentence. Uh, and sorry, Mark, American football as aburrido. <laughs> and and then I said, estoy aburrido cuando mis amigos lo miran. Is that uh, right? Uh, right? Lo, uh, uh, did, uh, estoy watch it? estoy aburrida. I am bored cuando lo Mis miro. Amigos. When I look at it, when I watch it, sí. Okay. Sí. El fútbol americano, el fútbol americano, sí. Uh, 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 bueno, sí, Kathleen. <laughs> okay. Es aburrido memorizar los con, uh, conjugaciones, pero es, es necesario. Okay. Sí. Eh, es aburrido saber de memoria o memorizar. Yeah, memorizing. Mm. Es aburrido. Sí, eso es, eso es. Exactly. Exacto. Sí, Mariana. Uh, manejando a Arizona a veces es aburrido. Ah, bien. Y decimos manejar. Decimos. ¿Sí? Because this is, uh, we're using, uh, yeah, in, in, in English, we say driving, and we're talking right. about that activity, okay? But I'm not saying I'm driving or you're driving or we're driving. I'm using it as it's an activity. When we do that in Spanish, we cannot take it as the manejando like we do in English. It's got to be manejar. Manejar a Arizona a veces es aburrido. Eso es bien. Try West Texas. Oh, oh. Sí, una vez, una vez tenía un amigo que, que vivía en Lubbock, Texas. Oh, ay. Y manejar al oeste de Texas, sí, uh, fue algo muy aburrido. Wow, that was a real yarn. Sí, plano, 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 flat, sí, no hay nada. Ok. Um, my apologies to anybody who might listen to this who's from Lubbock, which is not very likely, but you never know. Okay. Nunca se sabe. You never know. Uh, okay. And now, the idea of bored, meaning how you feel. 
And now we've got to switch to estar, ¿sí? Estoy aburrido cuando. Estoy aburrido cuando. I apologize to all the women in the class on this one. <laughs> uh, maybe. Estoy aburrido cuando mi esposa mira los películas Hallmark. Oh! <laughs> or, or, or nuestra, uh, nuestro gran tele. Sí. Um, y uh, ella es uh, aburrida. Aburrida. Está aburrida. She is bored. Ella, ella, es, ella está aburrida cuando uh, miró los uh, partidos por uh, la tele. La, uh, sí. La tele. Sí, sí. Uh, y, y realmente, Marco, sí, de verdad estoy de acuerdo. I, I really have to, sí, la, las películas de Hallmark. Ay, 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 ay. Bien, pero hay, hay personas que son aficionados, sí, a, de, de todas las películas de Hallmark. Y así es, sí. Estoy aburrido cuando tengo que, que ver a uh, un torneo de golf. Sí, ver el golf, wow, a, puedo entender porque a, a mucha gente, a mucha gente le gusta jugar al go golf, pero jugar al golf es otra cosa que ver un torneo de golf. Y uh, wow. Toda la gente que... Uh, jugar uh, el golf uh, uh, le gusta mirar uh, uh, el sí. golf uh, por la tele. Tienes razón, creo que sí, creo que sí. I think so, creo que sí, porque uh, eh, eh, otra vez sí eres aficionado. Again, if you're a fan, sí, otra vez, pero sí. Uh, bueno, hay otro ejemplo con estoy aburrido. ¿O no? Una pregunta. Sí, sí, dime. Estoy abrida cuando limpia la casa. But if I wanted to say like Jan, I don't like cleaning my house. So the like, how do you say like Jan, who said something about cleaning her house? Ah, como Jan. O oh, como. Como Jan, exa, ah. sí, o sí, o estoy de acuerdo con Jan. I agree with Jan, sí. Oh, uh, me siento exactamente como Jan. I feel exactly like Jan. Uh, igual a Jan, same as Jan. <laughs> sí, uh, estoy aburrida. Cuando tengo que limpiar la casa. Eso es, sí. Muy bien. Bueno. Ah, siguiente. Siguiente. And here I've just got some examples. Because uh, uh, this one I felt in the video was a little bit harder to get. But again, when we use es molesto or es molesta, we say that thing is annoying. The nature of that thing Or maybe a person. It could be. Wow, you're really dissing the person if you're saying that. And it is possible that, yeah? See? You really dislike somebody a lot. You cannot stand that person. Es molesto. That person is just annoying through and through. Uh, but when we use estar with molesto, it's how you feel. Again. Okay? Uh, so, por ejemplo, for example, uh, Ser molesto, to be bothersome, for something to be truly annoying. It's a real drag. La gente que toca la bocina constantemente es molesta. People who honk their horns nonstop yeah, are annoying. See, and notice that because we're talking about la gente es molesta, because it's la gente, people, It's got to be es molesta. The horn honkers are a pain in the butt. 
Mm. That's what that sentence is saying. Yeah. Es molesta, sí? Bien. Uh, but estar molesto is to feel annoyed, right? Uh, por ejemplo, estamos molestos porque Alicia nos interrumpe. We are annoyed, we are bothered, we are bugged by the fact that Alicia is interrupting us. But it's how we feel. We are not annoying people. <laughs> we feel bothered by the thing that Alicia is doing. Estamos molestos porque Alicia nos interrumpe. Vale, sí, bien. Um, so one thing the video did not talk about, but I want you to be aware of, because this is super, super common and kind of what uh, Claudia mentioned about that word sensato, that she prefers to use maduro, mature, instead of sensato. Uh, this is something that's like an alternate way of using the core of that word molesto. But when we turn it into a verb, this is a really common way also to express the same idea. But then it becomes a thing like estar. Okay, so it's a workaround to kind of avoid that. Do I use ser de estar? Uh, we use uh, a me molesta or te molesta or le molesta or les molesta or nos molesta. We say this thing or this person bothers us. So it's a different way of taking that word molesto, but we turn it into a verb. And this is a super, super common chunk of words to use. So instead of saying le gusta, me gusta, te gusta, it'll be me molesta, te molesta, le molesta, nos molesta, right? Uh, por ejemplo, me molesta la música fuerte. Loud music bothers me, annoys me, drives me nuts. Yeah, me molesta. Uh, but we're using it as a verb, whereas, you know, up here, we were definitely not using these, you know, molesta or molesta as verbs up here. Down here, it is a verb like gusta is a verb. Me molesta la música fuerte. Or we can make it plural. Antonio le molestan los mosquitos. Mosquitos annoy Antonio. But you Antonio. Could, you know, you, I guess you could you could take like your example of honking the horn and use it as in you know use it with um, me molesta like me molesta cuando la gente toca la bocina. Exacto. Exacto, sí. Tienes razón. You are exactly right about that. So there are always ways you may hear these things tweaked. Yeah. And this is a good, good thing to know because it is a different way of using kind of that core word, but we're now using it as a verb and you may hear it, you know, used that way. Okay. Ah. Uh, Bien. And we're going to finish up with this. I'm going to leave this last slide for another day. Uh, but this uh, word, harto, they did bring up in the video. And harto, uh, I've got the estar underlined because really you could say something is harto, but you hear it used with estar, I think, more. And it means that somebody feels fed up again, how somebody feels. So what I kind of want to emphasize is uh, examples with what you're, I think, more likely to hear. Estoy harto de, I'm fed up with. Estoy harto de mis colegas en la oficina. I'm fed up with my coworkers at the office. ¿sí? Estoy harto de los perros de mi vecino. I am fed up with my neighbor's dogs because I don't. They leave deposits in my yard. I don't know what. They bark too much. They look at say whatever it might be. See? Estoy harto de. Estoy harto de. So just know that we always use this with a de. Estoy harto de. Estamos hartos de. See? Estás harto de eh, este problema. You're fed up with this problem. Algo así. Something like that. See? Bien?
And we'll come back to this Easter thing later. Más tarde, ¿sí? Bien. Bueno. Adelante, adelante. Okay. Um, I, ooh, and I think I need to put my sound on for this. I'm going to do a little walkthrough with this because a couple of people had asked that they would like a little running translation of the Brenda story. Because it's like, you know, I don't really totally get why she's shifting between these two past tenses in this little story. And it's a little story about a trip and it won't take 22 minutes because it's, you know, she kind of reworks the story from a couple different angles. Uh, I'm going to hope I've got the right portion of the video here. I think I do. Creo que sí. We'll see. Uh, La historia, vamos a ver las palabras nuevas, frases interesantes y expresiones útiles que tú puedes usar y aprender en tu español. Oh, she's listo? just explaining how she's breaking vamos, it down. Vamos con el paso número uno. Tienes que escuchar esta historia. Te voy a contar una historia story, de mi viaje a Cuba. Uh, an embarrassing, a humiliating story about my trip to Cuba. Cuba. Algo que me pasó cuando visité Cuba. Something that happened to me when I visited Cuba. Cuba. En unos veranos. ¿Puedes comprender esta historia? Vamos a ver. Estaba de vacaciones en Cuba con... Ah, I was on vacation. And this is talking about, not I went over, but I was on vacation. So people are going to, uh, you know, we have the rules about preterite and imperfect. We use for repeated actions, for setting the scene. Most importantly, really, for description in the past. Imperfect. Did I say imperfect? Imperfect. Yeah, you, you, I'm you, sorry. You. I got, I got, yeah, I got to it. Yeah, sorry about that. Imperfect. Like, erase, erase, erase. Imperfect. Imperfect is what she's starting off with. Estaba de vacaciones con, uh, en Cuba con Travis. Uh, estaba de vacaciones imperfecto. Imperfect is used for repeated actions, for setting the scene, for describing things in the past. So here is a key that helps a lot of people. Um, if, if you can translate, or if in English, if in English, the phrasing you would use would be, I was doing something. If you would in English say, I was doing something, uh, uh, right? Or I used to do something, that's imperfect. Okay, see, sí, Diana. I get that part. If you add last year, does that change it? Last year, I was on vacation. Um, depende. Kind of depends. So, See, so here's, here's part of the key. People are going to, uh, um, somebody might say, uh, el año pasado estuve de vacaciones. Last year, I was on vacation. And what they're advertising, what they're, the idea they're trying to get across there or the flavor of what they're saying is more of a, well, this is done. But this is a descriptive story. Okay. And because so it's a descriptive it. story, because she's narrating, like kind of uh, watch this video of what was going on. And I'm going to show you what was happening here. Um, uh, uh, you know, the flavor, the flavor she's trying to get through is that I'm setting the scene for what was happening here. Okay. So mentioning last year really doesn't change it. It still is a description. Not, yeah, not right. So, so if, if the flavor they want to get across to you is more, I am mm -hmm. describing this in okay. the past. Okay. They're going to tend to go more with imperfecto. Sí. Because I know we always learn, oh, with these phrases like el año pasado or whatever, you know, oh, it's pretérito. And, and 
it's true, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. But, um, uh, you know, if, if, if the idea here is she's narrating and painting the scene, setting the scene, she's going to go more with that. So why then do we need preterito? We need preterito always to tell about, oh, in this moment, this happened at this moment, this happened at this moment, this happened and more, these are actions that move us into, ooh, the next phase was this, and then this happened, and then this happened. So that's the job of preterito, all right? Yeah. Whereas imperfecto is going to describe. So I was on vacation. Pregunta. Oh, si, sí, perdón, si. Sí. So uh, is this, but to me, this is a, she's going to vacation on Cuba. That's a one-time thing. So isn't that uh, an event? No. Mm. Her, the flavor she's getting across, the idea she wants you to think about is, well, this was going on and now things are going to happen to interrupt at various points. I was on vacation and, and I was on vacation happened oh, like over this amount of time. And now over the Estaba de Vacaciones, I was on vacation this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen within this period of time. Those are the events. Those are the events. Yeah. So I know we have all these rules, but uh, what you should take away is that the tense someone chooses to use is going to tell you if they're in descriptive mode or if they're in the, oh, here's the order of when things happen. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Okay. Do I mean this as little things that interrupted on this whole continuum of estaba de vacaciones? The estaba de vacaciones is a, a big wide continuum. And many things happen in all those little moments in the whole span of estaba de vacaciones. I was on vacation. See, si? Yeah. So she's okay. choosing to just set up that she's going to describe. She's for saying, us. I'm going to tell you about this long chunk of time that was, estaba de vacaciones, I was on vacation. See, si? yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Gracias. Estábamos con Gracias. un grupo de turistas viajando. Uh, we were with a group of tourists and that's just, it's not an event. We were just in this bubble group. Estábamos con un grupo. We were with a tourist group. And that's just description. Trabajando en autobús por distintas ciudades. Uh, traveling by bus through different cities. And distintas means different. Y llegamos a un lugar bellísimo. Ah, and now we have the first interrupting event. Llegamos. We got to... We arrived at, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, llegamos a un lugar bellísimo. We got to a beautiful place. We arrived at a beautiful place. It's in this big continuum of Estábamos de Vacaciones. It's the first little event she's going to tell you that happened. Okay. Llamado Viñales. And that's just the name of it, Viñales. Y la guía turística nos dijo que podíamos bajar a ver... Ah. La, la guía turística, the tour guide, ¿sí? nos dijo, told us. And this is going to be the standard, nos dijo, told us. That's always an event. We arrived, the guide told us. Yeah. So the bus pulled up, that's the llegamos part, and it stopped. Yeah. <laughs> llegamos, we got there. El guía nos dijo, the tour guide told us. And notice, told us that we could get off. Uh, nos dijo, because that's just, it came out of her mouth. It's an event that we were able to get off. See? And that's imperfecto. Que podíamos bajar. Poder is a verb that's very specific. It has a different connotation if it's in pretérito versus imperfecto. And 
I'll show you how with the same phrase. If you said, pudimos, uh, I, if I put that into imperfect, or, I'm sorry, if I put that into preterito, if I put poder into preterito, and I said, pudimos bajar, it would change that meaning to really mean we managed to get off. Not we have the ability, but oh, we actually, we got that done. We stepped off. And this is imperfecto, just means we have the ability. <clears throat> okay. It's kind of a hard thing to get the feel of with that particular verb. The other ones will be more obvious. But she told us that we could do this. She told us we have the ability, meaning you can get off the bus or you can sit there, right? You just, you have this option. So, que podíamos bajar. El paisaje. So, you, you could get off to see the 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 landscape the the view okay y a sacar unas fotos. and to take some pictures Era... so you want to stay on the bus stay on the bus podíamos bajar we could we have the ability to get off okay imperfecto there because it wouldn't make sense for her to put that poder into imperfecto there it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense it would mean we got this done Okay. Un lugar hermoso. Había un... Era un lugar hermoso. It was a beautiful place. Era there is clearly better because it's a description. That landscape was not an event. It's what something looked like. And description has to stay in that camp of imperfecto. Era un lugar Hermoso. It was a beautiful place. I'm describing it. And then she's going to say, había, there was. Un mirador. Y se podía... Había un mirador. There was a viewpoint. Okay. There was a place from which you stand there and you can see everything in the whole landscape. That's what a mirador is. A mirador is a place where you stand and you see a great expanse of something, countryside, ocean, whatever it may be. Yeah. Uh, había un mirador. There was a viewpoint. Podían ver las montañas. Se podían ver las montañas. One could see the mountains. You could see the mountains. Marilyn, why, why in that little phrase there, we, we, she used se podían ver as opposed to podíamos. Po -po ah, she could have chosen to say we could see the view. It would have been perfectly good, perfectly fine to rephrase that as y podíamos ver las montañas. That would be great. How she's changing that up a little bit is she's saying anybody could. Se podían ver las montañas. You could see the mountains. Uh, anybody could see them. Anybody who was there could see them. This is, uh, ooh, ¿cómo se describe? How does one describe this? Uh, one could see the mountains. For... Uh, and that sounds kind of formal in English, yeah. One could see the mountains. But in English, uh, we usually informally will say it as, well, you could see the mountains, meaning anybody. And that's what that se podían ver las montañas is about. The mountains could be seen. You're not likely in English to say the mountains could be seen. But that technically is what it is. You'd be likely to phrase it in English as, you could see the mountains. See? ¿Sí? Eso. Okay. Pero importante. Important is, podían, it's podían, se podían ver. Because again, it's a description. You could see them. It's not really an event. It's what was going on for a lot of people, for anybody who was standing there. 
llenas de vegetación, full of vegetation, y palmeras. with trees and, and, and palm trees in there as well. And now she's going to flip to an event, un evento. And llamar la atención means to call your attention. Llamar does mean to call. So this is kind of like saying you you notice something. Llamar la atención. Something grabs your attention. That's llamar la atención. And she's saying this happened to me. Me llamó la atención. Una estatua de bronce. Me llamó la, ten, uh, la atención una estatua de bronce. Uh, a bronze statue. Oh, I noticed. Because you wouldn't usually say it in English. A bronze statue called to me. <laughs> right? But that's kind of really what, how, what you're saying. Wow, this thing grabbed my attention. This thing grabbed my attention. Me llamó la atención la estatua de bronce. This bronze statue uh, drew my attention. It got my attention. Que estaba construida en el mirador. Que estaba construida, which was built on this viewpoint. Estaba construida is, again, just a description of where that thing was located or where it was built in this case. So it was built and set up on this mirador. That's what she's telling us. Como si estuviera cantando y celebrando toda esa belleza. Uh, as if it were singing and celebrating all that beauty. Uh, como si estuviera cantando, as if it were singing, that estuviera is a past subjunctive. Don't worry about too much about that. Just know that it looks like estar. It looks like it comes from estar, right? So, como si estuviera cantando, as if it were singing. Okay. Estaba tomándole fotos y hasta... Ah, and now she doesn't say this as notice. She doesn't say this as I took pictures. She wants you to get the idea of I was taking some snapshots. She used the car in the first paragraph, and now she's just switching up for no particular reason. Switching up for no particular reason. Um, probably not to be repetitious. Okay. To change it up, just as we do. Yeah. Because one thing she brought out in that video is that you can say sacar fotos, you can say tomar fotos, you can say fotografiar. I don't hear fotografiar a whole lot. Tomar, sacar fotos, either one of those. And she's just switching it up to vary her diction. To, okay. Yeah, and mix it up. Why did she put the le on the end of tomar? Why did she have the le there? Because she's taking pictures of that thing. And that thing turns out to be a person at the end, right? Seems like she could just say, estaba tomando fotos, though. I was taking photos. I was, but yeah, yes, yes. But or this is kind of... photos of the countryside. Of, of it, and the it happened to be a him, but unbeknownst right. at that time to her, right? Because... Okay. The fact that that was actually a real human being was not known to her at the time, but yeah. Uh, this is again, that le is kind of like the hangnail le of Spanish. Uh, taking photos of him, it wound up being a him. So it's a le. Estaba tomando le fotos. I was taking pictures of him. Okay. Okay. Haciendo un video cuando noté que los otros turistas. Uh, cuando noté, uh, and now we got uh, a pretérito, an event. Noté, I noticed, I noticed something. I noticed that the other tourists. Empezaron a mirarme un poco extraño. Uh, began to look at me with kind of oddly. Okay, un poco, they were looking at me. They were kind of giving me the funny side eye. Un poco extraño, a little strangely, 
¿sí? A empezaron a mirarme. They started to look at me a little strangely. Claro. Los entendía perfectamente. Of course, I understood them perfectly. And, uh, yeah, she's using this as imperfecto, what her mental process was. Seguro se preguntaban por qué decidí tomar una foto a la estatua. Ah, surely, seguro, surely, they were wondering... And again, this is where in English, what she's trying to get across is they were wondering, they were asking themselves. Preguntarse is to wonder about. Because you ask yourself something if you're wondering. <laughs> yeah. And preguntarse means to wonder. Uh, se preguntaron, seguro, se preguntaban, surely they were wondering. Were wondering is the idea she wants you to get. They were wondering why I decided to take a picture of the statue. They were wondering, because they're standing there thinking, while, I'm, while I am standing there doing this, yeah, why I decided, and I decided is a preterite thing. I made this decision, boom. Okay, decidir in the past will usually tend to go into preterito, usually. Because once I've decided something, it's kind of definite. I've made up my mind, yeah? So it's usually, boom, a point in time kind of thing. Okay, uh, se preguntaban por qué decidí tomar una foto a la estatua cuando había un paisaje deslumbrante. En When there was a, a dazzling, uh, 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 you know, uh, landscape. Frente de nosotros. In de front of us. La estatua se empezó a mover. Ah, suddenly the statue started to move. Move. Se empezó a mover, and moverse is reflexive, so I could say, se empezó a mover, or empezó a moverse, I can switch that se to either place, right? Uh, moverse means to move around, okay? Mover is somebody moving a thing into a place, but when we talk about a person moving their arms, their legs, their head, you know, whatever, it's moverse. Se empezó a mover. The statue began to move. Convirtiéndose en una persona de carne y hueso. Turning into a person of? Flesh and bones. Yeah, flesh and bones. bones. Yeah, it, it looks like meat and bones because the idea of flesh is expressed with the word carne. That's what carne is. Yeah, it's flesh. Uh, meat and bones. Um, okay, a ver. Carne y hueso is the way that's always phrased in Spanish. <laughs> Me asusté muchísimo. I got scared. It startled me. And that's an event. Because it happened like that. You know, the guy started to move. You don't expect it. And boo! I freaked out. Me asusté. Me asusté muchísimo. I got really scared. Oh, oh. And it Todos and and preterito because it's her reaction. It happened boom that fast. Okay. It's not like saying, "I was scared of spiders when I was a little kid," meaning all that time I felt that way. It's like this happened and I went, "Whoa!" <laughs> Me asuste is her reaction. I freaked out. Viajeros empezaron a reírse y a burlarse de mí. Uh, all, the, all the other travelers, meaning all the other tourists, right, began to laugh. And burlarse is make fun of, okay, or mock. Mock sounds pretty derogatory, but, you know, like, hey, look at the dummy. <laughs> That's burlarse, yeah? Hey, look at the dummy. Okay. Uh, reírse y burlarse de mí. Qué vergüenza. ¿Cómo? How embarrassing. Uh, what shame. Qué vergüenza. What shame. Meaning I'm, I'm mortified. ¿Cómo no 
pude darme cuenta de que era una persona disfrazada. Ah, ¿cómo no pude darme cuenta? How could I not have figured this out? How is it that I did not figure out that this was a person in costume? Disfrazada means in costume or disguised. Yeah, this is a person in a costume. ¿Cómo no pude darme cuenta? Why is that pude? Because how is it that I didn't manage to figure this out? Mm. Why, why did I not figure this out? Everybody else knew. Why was I the dummy? Okay. ¿Cómo no pude darme cuenta? How did I not figure this out? And poder en pretérito means... You got it done. Or in this case, no pude. I couldn't figure it out. And she's not talking about her ability. It's saying, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I see this? So that's why she puts it into preterito. Why didn't I do that? Why didn't I see this when everybody else figured it out? <laughs> Tengo que decir que uso lentes y sin ellos no puedo ver nada. Ah, okay, here's her excuse. Uh, I use glasses. I, I wear glasses, and without them, I cannot see a thing. Y sin ellos, without them, ellos is talking about los lentes. Sin ellos, no puedo ver nada. Without them, I can't see a thing. Okay. That's my excuse. I'm, I'm going with it. <laughs> y esto de, de las personas que se actúan como, como si fueran estatuas. These people who act as if they're statues. This is kind of a common thing in bigger cities. I don't think you see it too much where we live here. You go to New York, San Francisco, Paris, Madrid. There are people who do this, you know, like people play in public for money, you know, like they, they play an instrument for money. It's the same kind of setup. Yeah. People who just set themselves up there. And I forget if that's sand or... Sí, eso es. Okay. A ver. I hope that helps you as a walkthrough to kind of get the feel. She is trying to give you a feel for description, background action versus this happened, this happened, this happened. Okay. Many times in English, when we say somebody was doing something, it's going to go into that imperfecto. See? Uh, versus something that just happened. Boom. Preterito. Okay. A ver. Marilyn, I just want to make a general comment. Sí. I'm always, always glued to those Spanish subtitles. That's usually the only way I can understand the story. But I love this video because she's the speed with which she spoke. Yes. I could just listen to it and actually understand it. Okay. Uh, this this was a yeah this was a kind of this was a kind of a pleaser. I got a lot of people that oh I like this video. Yeah, the way she tells it is slow. Night. But now it's okay if you needed the subtitles through that because there are some kind of more sophisticated, uh, you know, structures going on through some of that. But even if you turned off the subtitles, you would get seventy five percent easily, sixty percent easily of what was going on in the whole thing. Hopefully the little vocabulary thing helped you a little bit. Okay, I sent that little vocab list because, you know, how many people are gonna know hueso bone? Maybe not, you don't talk about bones a lot, you're not gonna know that word hueso, right? Carne hueso is a really specific thing, it's like say, yeah, flesh and bones, but you know, yeah. So. Uh, Again, Burlau say you're probably not going to talk about mocking people a lot. So it's a helpful verb to know, but is it something you're going to use in conversation a lot? No. So I wanted to, um, anyway, make sure 
that um, you had some background and uh, hopefully you could figure out. And, and, and I won't walk you through all of these, but, uh, you know, because she gave you the answers in the video, you could see where the words plugged in. Most of the words she plugged in were verbs, but there were a few uh, terms as well. This term right here for this thing that I have to wear right here, lentes, in Latin America, the co more common term for glasses is lentes. If you go to Spain, it's more gafas. I have heard some people from Latin America who do use gafas, but it's usually either going to be gafas or lentes, one of the two. People know, even if you're like, if you're in Spain and you don't use gafas and you use lentes instead, they'll still know what you mean. Totally know what you mean. Okay. Um, one thing she points out, there's a third term for this thing we call glasses, lentes, gafas, anteojos, which literally means in front of your eyes. But usually only old people use that term. <laughs> So the best thing I can relate that to is anteojos is like saying spectacles. How often do you say grandma put on her spectacles? <laughs> when you read that, you're thinking, ooh, old timey. Yeah. Anteojos, most people who speak Spanish, is a known word, but it's an old timey word. And people say, oh, I read that, but I don't say it. Okay, so you had all these. Let's let's get in with some of our questions here. Ooh, a ver. And we may not get through all of these today, so we'll get through as many as we can. Pero depende, it depends. La última vez, the last time. La última vez que tus amigos invitados, guests, whatever they are, whether they're friends or just guests, te visitaron. The last time your friends visited you. ¿Sí? Uh, ¿Los llevaste a un mirador aquí en Arizona? ¿Dónde estaba el mirador? ¿Por qué era notable? I'm really just asking other things, uh, rephrasing it. ¿Dónde estaba el mirador? Where was the viewpoint? ¿Sí? ¿Por qué era notable? Why was it a wow? <laughs> notable, notable, but, you know, a wow. Why was it a wow, see? ¿Y qué podías ver? And you can answer it, all of those wrapped up in a few different sentences, see? And that's what did you manage to see? See, what were you able to? What were you able to? Not what did you manage to. That would be que... Pudiste ver. What did you manage? Oh. Ah, que podías ver. What were you able to? Yeah. They look Pudiste too much alike. is specifically used when you mean you got something done. Or conversely in the negative, what you didn't get done. Okay. So if somebody says, no pude ver, I couldn't see. What they're saying really is to you, oh, wow, I didn't manage to eyeball that. Something happened that it was not, I, I, I didn't actually do that thing of seeing it. No pude ver. I didn't manage to see it. Pero no podía ver is I wasn't able to see. Podía ver, I, oh, I could see it was visible. It was visible. Okay. Bueno, ideas de ustedes, some ideas from you con esto. You know, when you take your guests someplace because you want to show them what something looks like, this is that kind of question. Well, I can throw out a th couple of things. Um, Candy and Tom nos visitaron. Uh, los llevanos, uh, llevamos a Mount Lemon, circa de Tucson. Los llevamos a Mount Lemon. We took them to Mount Lemon. In El Fondo, which I saw Fondo was the top, but that didn't seem really the right word. 
en la cima, at the top. Había muchos cactus. Oh, oh no, at the bottom. In El Fondo, había muchos cactus. Uh, but let, let's see. Okay, había en el fondo, mucho. había muchos cactus. En el fondo, way down, meaning now right. you're on top there and looking go. way down. En el fondo means I'm looking this way, right? En el fondo, había muchos cactus. There were a lot of cacti, See, sí. Okay, bueno. And era fresco en la parte superior. It was cool at the top? Ah, hacía fresco. Hacía fresco. Hacía fresco is one of those weather terms. You could say estaba fresco. You could say estaba fresco, but it wouldn't be era. Oh. Because you're talking about how it felt, right? How yes, that temperature I was felt. To describe it. So you could say estaba fresco, that would be okay, or hacía fresco. Okay. Either one of those. But it's got to be an imperfecto, and it's got to be either estaba fresco, because okay. it felt cool or hacia fresco which is often used as a weather term meaning the weather was making cool temperatures okay okay because hacer is often used with weather terms but you can't say estaba fresco it was okay. cool good that helps bien and I'll stop there mount lemon see sí. es un mirador that is a viewpoint mount lemon el monte lemon eso es sí a ver. ¿Qué más? Any other viewpoint story? Sí, bueno, Kathleen. Ok, um, yo vivo en Virginia, pero la última vez que um, yo visité Arizona, mi hermana y su uh, marido um, me llevó a Sedona. Me llevaron y, a Sedona, y, sí. Y um, uh, pod, podría ver um, muchas um, montañas y piedras rojas. Ah, sí, es la <laughs> tierra de... de piedra roja. Es mm -hmm. la, sí, es la tierra de piedra roja. That is Red Rock Land. Es, sí. A uh, piedra roja, sí. Muy, y a uh, paisajes famosos, sí. El paisaje de Sedona es realmente, de verdad, algo, sí, a uh, uh, muy uh, famoso, muy famoso. Sí. Bueno. Y sí, sin uh, sí, sí. Eh, eh, hermosísimo, sí. Es paisaje hermosísimo. Uh, bueno, algo más. Bueno, sí, Carrie. Um, la última nuestro hijo con sus familia visitaran los llevamos a un mirador de Weaver's Needle. Oh, sí. Estaba fuera del sendero Apache Junction. And I think it's fue notable porque era un corto paseo hasta un gran vista. Pudimos ver las weaver's needle a las montañas de la superstición. Ah, sí. Bueno, sí, Carrie, fuiste a la cima, a la cima de weaver's needle? No. Ah, ok. <laughs> Man, just looking. Te pregunto, te pregunto porque mi esposo una vez, pues, cuando tenía como 25 años, sí, fui, fui a la cima oh. de, de Weaver's New. Uh, y eh, es toda una aventura. That is a real adventure. Sí, hay que, hay que... Mm -hmm. Sí, mm, uh, no. hay que escalar. You've got to climb. Hay que escalar. Mm, sí. Uh, pero sí, Weaver's Needle es notable aquí también, ¿sí? Um, ok, buen ejemplo, buen ejemplo. Una vez, mi esposo y yo 
llevamos a un amigo a, a la cima a la cima de Four Peaks, de la montaña mm. de Four oh. Peaks. Uh, y, y el mirador uh, desde, desde la cima, from the summit, desde la cima de Four Peaks, cuatro picos, sí, uh, es, pues, se puede ver si sí, todo, puedes ver, Mese, puedes ver si sí, a uh, uh, Phoenix, puedes ver a uh, toda sí, a uh, uh, Mesa, todo. Muy bien. Hay otra cosa, sí, de, que, de un mirador. What's the word that you're using for summit? La cima, C-I-M-A. Oh. La cima is the very tippy top. La cima, the summit, the top of whatever it is, a high point, <laughs> whatever that high point is. Okay. A ver. Un poquito más. And we'll have to carry this over into next session, but that's okay. Uh, uh, ¿A dónde fuiste? Let's just take this part so people have um, a starting point so you can give some quick answers. ¿A dónde fuiste? Where'd you go? And now we've got to use preterito. Okay. ¿A dónde fuiste la última vez? The last time. So we're talking about a definite point in time here. Uh, not where you were going, but where you went, okay? We're going is iba, imperfecto, but where you went is fui, fuiste, fue, okay? ¿A dónde fuiste la última vez que hiciste una excursión? Last time you did a little day trip. ¿A dónde fuiste? Fui a Lake Geneva con mi familia. Ah, muy bonito, muy bo bonito. Lake Geneva, que está en Wisconsin, ¿no? Sí. Está sí. en Wisconsin, sí. Es un lugar muy bonito, muy popular. Muy popular. Durante el verano especialmente. No sé sí. si es muy popular en el invierno, pero sí es muy popular en el verano. Bueno, uh, otra idea. ¿A dónde fueron ustedes? Where did you guys go? Sí, Terry. Uh, fue un la, Lago de Hot Springs. I don't know. Okay, Palo, sí. How do you say spring? Sí. Hot, fui uh, a, and I would just use the English term there because that's what okay. it's labeled. Fui a, fui a. But it's got to be fui because I fui, went. Fui. Mm -hmm. fui, fui a. a hot Springs. Sí. Con, con mi familia. Okay. Uh, there's a, a silly little trick that a guy once used for my teenage students because people with kids, when they were first learning all those conjugations for ir, you know, fui, fuiste, fue. The two that you get mixed up are fui and fue, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the little trick he used to use was always think about yo when you say fui, because it's like going down a roller coaster. Fui! Going down the roller coaster and holding your arms up in the air. Fui! Uh, it's like saying we, and when you're talking about yourself when you do that. So fui, I went. Uh, <laughs> bueno, it's silly, but it works for a lot of folks because it creates a <laughs> mental picture, okay? I'm talking about myself. Fui. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. ¿A dónde fuiste? La última vez. Any other last time day trip things? Sí o no? Nada, nada. Okay. Uh, okay, we're going to leave that there. If you didn't contribute a place you went to, think about tagging that on for next time. We're going to finish these last two um, in our next session. Okay, see our next session. Um, uh, uh, yay, yay. Um, I want to continue for us next week with working this idea of uh, using the two past tenses, which are kind of 
challenging, yeah? Um, for those of you who are getting back in, but you don't remember too well, again, imperfecto, if you could say somebody was doing something in English, or if you can say uh, they were doing something in English, or they used to do, that's going to be a signal for imperfecto, okay? Uh, and again, people will trade off between imperfecto and preterito through any story that's talking in the past. You cannot tell any story in the past with only preterito or only imperfecto. I guess you could, if you were only describing a scene, you could potentially maybe use only imperfecto if you were only describing something. But uh, any story in the past is going to combine those two elements. So uh, it's always a, uh, uh, you know, something to keep in mind. People are plugging in that descriptive element versus this happened, this happened, this happened with preterito. So always be aware of that. We're going to... Um, uh, I'm going to give you another past uh, or another uh, storytelling video for next week that will uh, uh, do this thing of plugging in both imperfecto and uh, preterito um, so that you can hear both of them used and we'll have some, you know, different discussion prompts to plug in for that. See, ¿Sí? bien? Bien. Bien. Vale. Gracias. Bueno. De nada, de nada. Uh, and I haven't decided yet which past story we're going to use. So I have to kind of take a look at that and uh, see. But we'll pick up with the rest of those sentences. So if you didn't get a chance to look at the rest of those and like come up with some things to talk about, about the second half of that, you know, bring that to class next week and think about maybe contributing a couple of ideas with where you went and what you did and what the place was like and all of that. So you get used to using it. Anyway, so that's it. Okay. Está bien. Okay. Está bien. Gracias. 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 Sí. Sí. Nos vemos. Y cuídense. Take care. Cuídense mucho. Por favor. Gracias.